My dad was a pharmacist, so as a little girl, I used to um, stand in the pharmacy and I saw that that was an excellent position to be in to provide services and to look after our communities and their families. Caroline Diamantis has been a pharmacist for 35 years and a pharmacy owner for 30. But she says her business and other pharmacies are under threat because of prescription changes designed to benefit patients. The 60-day dispensing rule will have catastrophic consequences across the way we deliver pharmaceutical services in this country. The changes allow patients to pick up two months' worth of medication for the price of a single prescription. This means patients with chronic diseases will need fewer visits to the pharmacy and so will pay less. It's not only good for cost of living, we know from overseas experience, it also improves medication compliance, so it's going to be good for people's health as well. Caroline says this change is the most damaging policy to her profession she's ever seen. There was zero consultation with the industry experts and stakeholders, the ones that know how this industry is rolled out. Put this on for you. Now, are you feeling comfortable? Yes, stop. Okay. The Pharmacy Guild estimates that on average, individual pharmacies like this one will lose around $170,000 a year in income. But Caroline Diamantis is adamant it's not about that. That money that we receive for dispensing is what covers a myriad of free services that we provide in the pharmacy. Pharmacists will be obliged to now charge for every service that we do, whether it be the baby weighing, the blood pressure, the free deliveries. Pharmacists like Caroline also fear allowing patients to take home more medication at once could mean more medication misadventure and shortages. The Australian Medical Association has dismissed those claims and welcomed the move to 60-day dispensing. There will be no change to the amount of medication that patients take. Over a one-year period, everyone's still going to be taking the same amount of medication. It just means that they'll be given out two months at a time from the pharmacy. People should be reassured that they'll be able to get their medicines, take their medicines because they'll be able to afford to buy their medicines and that um, the sky won't fall in. Elizabeth Devaney from the Consumers Health Forum says the Pharmacy Guild is creating unnecessary alarm among patients in the midst of a cost of living crisis. We hear people saying we get the medicine our kids need but we don't get our own or people who say the GP gave me a script but I can't afford to actually get that medicine. So making these medicines more affordable so that people can take them is something that consumers really value. Everybody pays the one copay. Right. Same thing in France. Same the policy France. sparked an emotional outburst last week from the head of the Pharmacy Guild, which represents the owners of chemists around the country. If those spin doctors down there don't want to believe what I've got to say, get off your ass and go and talk to these guys. Right? I've had Labor Party senators and MPs just take their phones off the hook because they don't give a shit. Right? I'm sorry, I'm a North Queenslander, I don't mean to swear, but they just don't care, you know? Um, this is supposed to be a government that cares. This is not how one operates. And he wasn't alone. It's going to result in staff losses, ultimately, which is horrendous um, and not something that I've ever wanted to face. And we service three or 4,000 patients in the Torres Strait. We're not going to be able to supply the medications to those patients. Um, and that is where they're on the option. This is a deeply cynical and frankly dishonest scare campaign that the pharmacy lobby group is making to scare patients because they appear determined to choose profits for their pharmacy businesses over the very clear interests of patients. The Pharmacy Guild campaign against the government's changes has clearly struck a nerve. Where there is action being taken by a pharmacy through the course of this frankly dishonest campaign being run by the pharmacy lobby, those actions will be referred to the proper authorities. The Health Minister Mark Butler has hit back at the Pharmacy Guild's claims. The hit to revenue over the next four years is probably in the order of something between 1 and 1.5 per cent. To put that in context, pharmacy industry revenue grew by 30 per cent over the last four years. And as I said, every dollar we save is going to be reinvested back into community pharmacy. Do you really expect consumers to sympathise with pharmacies when they've made record profits last year? When we speak to our patients in our pharmacies about what this measure can mean 
for services that we can provide, they have a greater understanding of where we're coming from. Is this just a dummy spit from the Pharmacy Guild? This is grave concern from a profession across Australia. Most people consider the power and influence of the Pharmacy Guild as uh, second to none. What is unusual though is a health minister to come out publicly and dismiss the views of the Pharmacy Guild. Uh, I think that's uh, ruffled a few feathers. The Pharmacy Guild is one of the oldest and most powerful lobby groups in Australia. There's around about 5,700 pharmacies uh, across Australia and they reach into every community within Australia. So they have a very good uh, power base. One recent win for pharmacists is the right to trial prescribing some medications, like the oral contraceptive pill and antibiotics for urinary tract infections, in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland, a move that worries doctors. We are concerned that pharmacists would be put under pressure to prescribe certain medications and that there may be a, a financial benefit to that. Antidepressants, epilepsy... The Pharmacy Guild's Anthony Tassoni says the pushback from doctors doesn't serve patients well. We're meant to be on the same team, team patient, and be talking about the patient. Not talking about attacking each other, talking about the patient. The sad reality is there is enough sickness going around to keep us all busy. And he denies the government's decision to push ahead with the 60-day dispensing policy is a sign the Pharmacy Guild's power may be diminishing. I'm not really interested in talking about the Pharmacy Guild or what power we, people think we have or don't have. What I'm interested in talking about is patient care. Anthony Tassoni says the pandemic that boosted pharmacists' profits also put them at great personal risk and the government should reconsider this policy. During COVID, we kept our doors open. We were there for our patients where other health services, including general practice, weren't available. All we ask is that the government comes back to the table, sit down with us to talk this through more. It is a win for patients and it's going to be hard for the pharmacy guilds to say, we want this policy changed, but that means that the benefit that was coming to you is going to be removed. That's a really hard sell.